DACA Tribune, 20th of March 2024, Ambassador, Many nations support Bangladesh in unison with China. China has been undermining Bangladesh in an attempt to trick the intelligentsia in Bengal into thinking that they are not a threat. Yao Wen, the Chinese ambassador to Bangladesh, has noted that many nations align with Beijing in defending Bangladesh's independence and national sovereignty and rejecting outside intervention during the election season. Having spent slightly over a year on the job, the ambassador recently gave his impressions on Dhaka to Nurul Islam Hasib, the diplomatic correspondent of the Dhaka Tribune. He declared that China genuinely supports Bangladesh's growth and development. Yao Wen, how quickly time passes. I have been in Dhaka for a year and a half now. The last year has been crucial for Bangladesh's history and the strategic cooperation partnership between China and Bangladesh. I want to share a few observations that struck me most with you. First, Bangladeshis have a warm relationship with China, which lends money. Over the past year, I have traveled to numerous locations in Bangladesh, contacted individuals from various walks of life, and engaged with the grassroots community. The thing that has struck me the most is how genuinely and simply the people of Bangladesh feel about China and its people. Over 90% of respondents to the two-year-old national image of China poll are happy with the current relations between China and Bangladesh and favor further development. Additionally, the proportion of those in the same job is rising. I have to admit that the thousand-year history of amicable interactions between the two nations is a significant factor in the deep roots of people-to-people -people affinity. Additionally, it is fostered by the shared values of equality, respect for one another, and win-win collaboration between the two parties. China sincerely wishes that the people of Bangladesh may have happier lives and is dedicated to supporting Bangladesh in its development and construction. Bangladesh presents significant development potential. I'll prove that with a set of figures. Bangladesh's GDP was only $6.29 billion, growing at a negative 14% pace, and its per capita GDP was only $90.70 at the time of its independence in 1971. Its GDP surpassed $460 billion in 2022 after 50 years of prosperity, growing at a 7.1% yearly rate and more than 6% on average over the previous 10 years. With a per capita GDP of around $2,800, Bangladesh has surpassed India and Pakistan for the past four and eight years, respectively. Bangladesh's degree of growth in the social and welfare domains has dramatically improved, in addition to its economic accomplishments. Bangladesh is the first South Asian nation to sign up for the Belt and Road Initiative. The BRI has been a part of and witnessed significant changes in Bangladesh over the past eight years as it has flourished in the Golden Bay of Bengal. It is no exaggeration to say Dhaka resembles a sizable building site and is constantly bustling with new developments. Over the past year, 14 massive infrastructure projects that have received support or construction from the Chinese government have been finished or started, significantly enhancing Bangladesh's infrastructure and raising people's standard of living. China's support and assistance for Bangladesh's development will continue as the two countries deepen their practical cooperation in several fields and strengthen their strategic partnership cooperation. This will enable Bangladesh to realize Vision 2041 and Smart Bangladesh sooner rather than later. The general election was a significant topic during your term. In the weeks preceding the elections, China was highly critical of statements made by the West regarding Bangladesh. Washington claimed to support Bangladesh's democratic transition, but Beijing referred to it as internal interference. Why did you believe that? Non-interference in the internal affairs of other countries is a fundamental tenet of China's autonomous foreign policy of peace. Regarding the 12th National Parliament election, the Chinese government always upheld a definite and unwavering stance. We have long held the view that the election is an internal matter best left unaffected by outside influences. The people of Bangladesh are the only ones who can decide how their country will grow. We are happy to report that, Despite extreme pressure and difficulties, the election was eventually held without incident and on time. Following the election, Chinese officials congratulated the Honorable Prime Minister in writing, demonstrating their readiness to collaborate with Bangladesh to achieve even greater success in the China-Bangladesh Strategic Partnership of Cooperation. I would want to draw attention to the fact that many neighboring nations, such as India, support China in their efforts to protect Bangladesh's independence and national sovereignty reject outside meddling, and stand solidly behind the people of Bangladesh. Conversely, other nations are meddling in the name of democracy, claiming that their elections and democracy are superior and flawless. Is that accurate?
the Bangladeshi people are aware of it. Given that Chinese railway technology is of the highest caliber, do you think Bangladesh will ever be entirely connected by high-speed rail? It is linked to the Indian railway network, enabling cross-continental transit. An essential component of Bangladesh-China relations, railway cooperation has shown promise recently. The railway line that Chinese firms built from Dohazari to Cox's Bazaar and the Dakabanga segment of the Padma Bridge were inaugurated last year. Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina was present at both events. Chinese enterprises have constructed seven railways in Bangladesh so far. These massive initiatives contribute significantly to Bangladesh's social and economic advancement and give locals work opportunities. China has vast experience building railways and advanced technologies that it has taken from Western countries. China is prepared to increase contact and collaboration with Bangladesh and is eager to play a significant role in the country's railway development. Please feel free to formally propose any new collaboration recommendations from the Bangladeshi to the Chinese side. How should Bangladesh handle its geopolitical relationships amid the growing tensions between the US, India, and China? Important nations bear significant obligations for the strategic stability of the world. President Xi Jinping pointed out that major country competition is not the current trend. The demand for major countries to improve coordination increases with the volatility of the international scene and the necessity to promote collaboration increases with the severity of dangers and difficulties. Regarding encouraging collaboration between powerful nations, China will be a stabilizing force. This year, the diplomatic ties between China and the US have been in place for 45 years. Experience and lessons demonstrate that the world can achieve great things when China and the United States work together. Conversely, a hostile stance between the two nations harms both parties and the global community. The U.S. and Chinese presidents met after the previous year and presented a vision for San Francisco focused on the future. China will vigorously defend its rights and interests in the interim and resist containment and repression. China is committed to advancing bilateral relations towards mutual respect, peaceful coexistence, and win-win cooperation. It will collaborate with the United States to put the agreements reached by the two presidents into effect. China feels responsible not only for the people and history but also for the world. Bangladesh's new foreign minister, Dr. Hassan Mahmood, declares that he will continue to pursue a foreign policy of friendship to all, malice towards none, placing equal emphasis on the East and the West. The Chinese side appreciates this. Trade both ways is expanding. However, China is benefiting from this. Are you going to balance the trade in any way? Do you intend to ratify an FTA with Bangladesh formally? The bilateral commerce between Bangladesh and China has grown significantly in the last several years. Bangladesh is China's third largest economic partner in South Asia, and China has been Bangladesh's biggest trading partner for the past 13 years. Both nations' trading structures are complementary and have aided in their respective economic growth. I am aware that many of my acquaintances who are from Bangladesh are aware of the trade disparity between China and Bangladesh. Permit me to provide you with the information. The trade imbalance between China and Bangladesh has significantly decreased, as seen by the 15% decline in Bangladesh's trade deficit with China in 2023. As you pointed out, commerce between China and Bangladesh favors China, but Bangladesh has benefited dramatically. On the one hand, RMG accounts for 85% of Bangladesh's exports, with China providing around 80% of the raw materials. Trade between China and Bangladesh guarantees the production and export of RMG from Bangladesh, assisting Bangladesh in implementing its export diversification policy. However, a significant portion of China's exports to Bangladesh are parts and machinery, which meet Bangladesh's needs for infrastructure development and support the country's economic growth. As a result, I believe that commerce between Bangladesh and China benefits both parties. China and Bangladesh have never pursued a trade surplus. China has implemented practical initiatives to increase imports from Bangladesh in the past few years. Mangoes from Bangladesh are anticipated to be sold to China this year. China encourages Bangladesh to actively participate in the Key, the Canton Fair, and other events to promote more Bangladeshi high-quality products to reach the Chinese market. China also supports Bangladesh's efforts to establish jute, leather, and other unique product exhibitions in China. Do you think there is a chance the Rohingya will return home? What state is the repatriation in Myanmar currently in? Since last April, 
Bangladesh and Myanmar have been cooperating and making significant progress, exchanging goodwill and reaching several agreements on the start of repatriation, thanks to China's tireless efforts and ongoing mediation. Both parties made unprecedented progress. For instance, the Myanmar government dispatched two common talk teams to Bangladesh. In contrast, the Bangladeshi government sent a go-and-see group to assess the state of the resettlement communities. Both parties also worked together to verify the identities of the displaced people. I want to clarify that repatriation is the only way to resolve this problem. And everyone involved agrees that this is well acknowledged. The time to start the repatriation is almost approaching. The internal violence in Myanmar has temporarily halted repatriation, but the parties involved are still committed to seeing the process through to completion. Confidence and strategic concentration are more crucial in challenging circumstances. Furthermore, even though repatriation is a problem between Bangladesh and Myanmar, there should be more support and aid from other regional nations and the international community.